Okay, so um, if you think about sensor networks and how I described them in our last class, uh, routing in these networks is very challenging. And the reason is that um, devices aren't expected uh, devices aren't expected to stay still. Uh, devices aren't expected to last forever. Um, so in other words, the topology of the network is constantly changing. It's not changing very rapidly. It'll change, uh, but it could change um, on time intervals on the order of uh, minutes to hours. So over the, over the course of minutes to hours, uh, devices could move, devices could fail, um, and uh, your routing algorithm has to account for that possibility. So the features of AODB are intended to account for that. And its features include strictly on demand. So in other words, um, you don't keep a routing table uh, nodes don't keep routing tables unless they're actually part of a route. So in other words, um, if uh, this is unlike the, uh, the wired internet. So the wired internet, if you're a networking device that's connected, you, whether you're a router, whether you're a router or not, you re, you have to keep a routing table. Uh, and if you're not a router, generally, your routing table will only contain the, your local network address and the the address of your closest router. Here. Uh, because routes are expected to change, there's no point in maintaining a routing table, so nodes don't. Um, another feature, we have to avoid stale routes. So, um, say a device is part of a route, um, but a route that's infrequently used. So it, that node will keep the routing table, and we use it every so often. But on the time scale uh, in which that, that, that route is being used, perhaps devices will start moving, and that, that route will actually become stale. Without any node partic uh, in particular realizing it, uh, that, node act, that, that route actually becomes useless. So it's important to avoid that problem. And Stale route, that's, that's basically one that you think is there, but where everyone has sort of moved apart and it's no longer, it actually no longer exists. So this would be an example. So this, is a, this would be an infrequently used route. So let's say every, every minute or so, a packet is sent along this route. So that, probably, that probably would not be timed out. Uh, that route would be maintained by all the routers. Uh, but after 30 seconds have passed, uh, the battery on this guy fails. So this guy still has uh, uh, this guy still has uh, the route in mind. So he believes that, that this route still exists, even though that device has failed. So if someone else is out here uh, wanting a route to this destination, um, this guy will declare that he has a route. Even so this, this device will be fooled into routing through that one. So that's a stale route because it actually doesn't exist. Um, so all routes are paired with sequence numbers. Another feature of this is local and distributed. So 
So uh, routes are only set up as they're needed. There's no global routing coordinator that's keeping track of them. Um, a route is discovered by basically passing messages amongst neighbors. So if, if you think about it, that's, that's both a feature and a, uh, and a problem. So it's a, it's a feature because you don't need, there's no one central point of failure and no one central device that needs to keep track of the entire network. On the other hand, while discovering a route, there's going to be lots of messages that are wasted because basically what you're going to do is you're going to look to all your neighbors and ask them if they have a route. They will in turn ask all their neighbors and so on and so on and so on. Uh, and if there is actually only one route, then a lot of, a lot of uh, network traffic will be used to try to find that route, whereas it's, it's actually not needed. But that's, that's sort of the price you pay for a distributed algorithm. So if you need a route in AODD, you go through what's called path discovery. Path discovery is initiated uh, when a route, uh, a node requires a route. In other words, a node has information that it needs to send to some, de some destination that it knows is within the network. And what it does is it sends a route request message. Basically, what that node is going to say is that I am, uh, I have information that's intended for node X, uh, who has a route. So it'll ask its neighbors who knows how to get to X. So the RREQ contains the following information. It contains the source address, the destination address. Obviously, so that's the absolute minimum that you need in order to set up a route. It will include the uh, what's called the broadcast ID, and that's just a unique identifier um, to ensure that uh, this route request message can be uniquely identified. It will also include the source sequence number. destination sequence number, and the hop count. So those sequence numbers are, as I said a second ago, what ensures that routes stay fresh. So the sequence numbers uh, they're used as follows. So this destination se I'll start with a destination sequence number. Let's call this uh, SSN and DSN. So the DSN, when the source includes the DSN in its route request, what it's actually including. destination sequence number for that particular destination. 